Welcome to 90 Day Fiancé, Season 10, Episode 6, If Anyone Objects to This Union, which is a very cute title. I mentioned before they're doing the whole, like, we have gathered here today, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and this it's episode right. is If Anyone Objects to This Union, and then the whole theme of the episode is meeting family and friends of the partner. Super, super episode. I mean, except for one couple. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, two couples. So Robert and Sophie do not meet anyone because they don't even talk. And then Ashley... Well, actually, you know, But they're still going to be on the show because What's-Her-Name wants money from the show even though she's done with him. Well, why don't we just go ahead and start with them? Oh, yay. So we started with Rob and Sophie. I thought she went to a hotel, but it looks like she rented a whole, staff, a whole house. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any staff. Which is when you... When she said there was no staff, John was like... Phew. Self-made mine, but... Yeah, yeah. She's been on her own since 16, sure. Well, yeah, I mean, if she's on... If, if... I don't know. I'm just not buying that she makes... I know a lot of people who make money who don't have staff. Maybe she just spends badly, but I'm not totally buying that. So, she could be gone at 70 until they're married. Um, it was kind of interesting, though, because... Now, this is not... I, this is not like a... I am not saying that Rob is right for this. But it was interesting that she said that she went and she found all these videos and the most recent one was from 14 weeks ago. Because for whatever reason, when she said it last week, I thought she implied that it was actively ongoing. Now, right. they've been together for, that's four and a half months ago. And I assume that they were together exclusively then too. That seems to be the indication is that they were together then as well. But, um, but I don't know why my first thought was like, oh, 14 weeks ago, that's, that's actually a while, but she didn't follow up with anything like, we've been exclusive for two years, and so he's been cheating, you know, he cheated on me in the middle of our relationship or anything. So, you know, he uh, can't expect him to be perfect. Is that what he said? That's what he said last oh, week. Oh, last right? week. So I have very little patience. It's like, if you think being perfect is not trying to bang women on the internet, then yes, I do expect you to be perfect. Right. Sorry, if that's your definition. Low bar. Very low bar. Like if he was something like, I um, I overslept. That's the kind of thing you say. I, I you're gonna be you know you expect me to be perfect. Like that's but at the least kind of he's thing. got a high paying job and a nice house with a bathroom inside, right? I know. Um. So yeah, that's all we got of them. And that was way too much. I'm gonna work through. We don't care. In the order that I have them written down, which is a little sporadic. Also, the people I like the least: Jasmine and Gino. Why are they still on TV? I just think that they they plead so they, they go. They just manufacture crap. I mean, okay, we'll get to it. Let's first get through. It's eighty four days. They're gonna go meet Gino's family. She hates them. She says, you know, they they're gonna go play bocce ball and do stuff. They walk up to the world's smallest table. I'm like, I guess they were just getting drinks beforehand. They meet everyone. They visit. There's some super. Um, it, it is funny. His family's like. He's not a very good-looking guy. Why is he with, with Jasmine? She must be a sugar daddy. And it's like... What face did she have on today? She... Well, they... She makes it sound like they're being so mean to her. And I'm like, uh, frankly, they're being pretty mean to Gino. Because their justification is there's no way she's with him for his looks or his personality. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, that's the underlying assumption is they take one look at Gino and they're like, she's got to be scamming him. Because there's no way she would be with him. And then he immediately tells his family that he that, that they took, she took all the money that he'd given her for the wedding, and had the spent it dress. the wedding dress and had spent it on, um, on plastic surgery. And then she announces to the family that she doesn't want to actually have a wedding. She just wants it to be her Gino and her dog. And it's like the I mean, the dog who is potty trained and doesn't pee on everything yeah. inside the house, right? No, no, that there that dog does not exist. So anyway, it's like yeah. I mean, if she wore a sign that says, I'm with him for the money, it would not be any more... It would not be surprising at all. It would not... I mean, so the whole point is, like, the, of course the family... The family would have to be dumb, blind, and stupid, and idiotic, and we'll just keep adding words to say the lack of brain power for them not to be questioning this. And then it's hilarious, because they bring up the prenup, and she's like, well, would you, you know, would you sign one? He's like, yeah, I did. And it's just like... I mean, it's like the perfect comeback because it's like, yeah, I did as well. I signed it. I didn't ask my wife to. I was the one who signed it because her mom insisted, so I don't get what the big deal is. 
and it doesn't, you know, this is like, well, they're attacking me. I was like, lady, if anyone should know what attacking looks like, it should be you. And you know that since you're not screaming and threatening to have a, make a sex tape with your ex, this is not even count. So they do all that. Over bocce ball. And I, and I don't care because you know it's not going to change anything. Um, they could both be hit by meteorites and this storyline would not, would still just ramble on with a, a fight, a makeup, a fight, a make. Well, they're not even really making up anymore. They're just going from one fight to the next. So then they get in the car. She, to me, this is how I'm going to tell you how I saw it. She very obviously drops her phone in the exact right spot so that she can reach under and try to find it and pulls out the perfect lipstick at that exact moment. And then all of a sudden he goes, I don't know what you're talking about. They immediately go into a fight. And I'm like, this is all scripted. This was like them deciding that she's going to find some lipstick so that she can accuse him of cheating. Because it's like, why didn't you just say... Because he's such a looker, you know. I mean, he's got all the girls crawling on him. And just the way he was talking sounded like... Well, frankly, as someone who has taken improv, it sounded like an improv scene. Which would be funny. A, ba a bad one. Well, I mean... It would be funny if you were allowed to laugh if I was if I if, if they had just set it up as uh, two ridiculous couple a ridiculous couple in a car fighting over something. I mean, it I, wasn't funny. It wasn't. Well, no, I'm not saying it was funny. It was just stupid. I'm just saying it was it was bad. It was badly acted. Um, but improvs are not supposed to be. I mean, sorry, I'm getting distracted. So. He says it probably belongs to a co-workers, and then she screams that, that he's not allowed to have female co-workers. And, and just the whole thing just felt like, just felt so deeply like, I don't believe any of this. And I just turned, we just were like, this is all fake. They planned this. The whole like, like, okay, I'll drop my phone and then find this and it'll be the perfect time to do it. And it's like, it could have been his mom's. It could have been, I don't think his mom's dead, but it could have been sister-in-law. It could have been, I mean, it's just one of those things where, and then he's like, well, maybe a co-worker. I, it's just the whole You know what now. it could have been? From Jasmine's purse. Yeah, I mean, that's far Which more likely. Which it was. Is that, yeah, they just had gotten, a, or gotten a new one from the drugstore in a color that's clearly not hers and dropped it in there. Okay, next up. Nikki and Justin, otherwise known as Igor. So they had sex the night before, but we got a but lot not, of detail. Not enough. Not the right kind. Got a lot of detail about that, which I decided I'm just going to give myself a pass and I just don't need to describe it in detail. But she, so she meets his friends. She immediately says that she was a prostitute. She was a drug addict. She was doing all these things. And now I don't judge her for having done those things. I think it's an odd choice, though, to meet new people who are already hesitant. Immediately, and immediately share that. Share that. And she's like, well, I'm not ashamed of it. And it's like, well, yeah, but there's a lot of things in my life that I'm not ashamed of that I don't immediately lead with. That I don't immediately say, well, this one time when I was, you know what I mean? Like, you kind of start off with, she's like, well, I want to know that I'm real people. It's like, well, why don't so, you start with that part? In Nikki's master class, lead with your red flags. Yeah. Not my master class. Not not this Nikki. In her master class, you learn about how she's an author yeah. and buy her books. In my master class. Yeah. Speaking of which, I'm thinking of putting one of my audio books up on um, on YouTube so that people can listen to it for free. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. I'm gonna try to do it this week. Um, you don't you don't have to. I'm just trying something new. Um, it would be on a different channel, be on my author channel, but it would still be free. Okay. So they go out. Something about why do I have leopard heart written down? There was something about that. Don't care. Um, so then they fight about how she wants more sex, and he's like, "Well, if you want more sex, then maybe you should have a sex professional." Not totally sure what he meant. I mean, was he saying that she should get a prostitute to fulfill her needs? But then I thought he was saying that if that's what you really want in a relationship, then maybe you should just get someone who just. Than just sex with you. Pay by the hour or whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't fully know where that conversation was going. But then they went into two every, extra with the friends. Her and the woman went away, and then him and the guy stayed. And they, it just seems like he's not that into her anymore. That he just is like. Do you think it's the constant nagging? I think it's a variety of things. But the whole point is he's just not that into her, but he, he seems to be just writing it out. As long as he can, as long as he keeps getting money and is on the show. Get that money. 
Um, and then she shares a lot. And then I'm starting to think, am I not a good woman? Is this how most women talk? Because I don't know that I've ever shared that much information about my sex life with anyone I've initially met. Ever. And I thought, is this what everybody else is doing? Because I, I mean, clearly Just now I'm married. Just crazy people. Okay, I'm going to keep rolling through these kind of quickly because we had a lot. We had six couples last night, which is good. Um, so then Anali and Clayton, Anali's from Peru, and Clayton goes uh, picks her up. They, she is... Hasn't told her dad about him or getting married or anything. Still hasn't done any of that. Wonder where da Dad calls her like 20 times a day. What did he think when she was in the airplane for 30 hours? He bought her flowers. They met, they definitely seemed genuinely into each other. You can oftentimes tell at least something because the number of couples who show up where one of them can barely kiss the other is actually pretty high for this show. So they're off to a good start by showing up, first off. Secondly, actually being interested in each other. He, they seem ridiculously happy to see you see it. She thinks his apartment is really small. Well, and maybe his room because is really it's, small. he's got closet mom, guinea pigs, dogs. Well, that was another thing is that she there was a lot of there wasn't a lot of space, and I didn't know. See, I thought I assumed those stairs that you see in the background like went downstairs, and his bedroom was downstairs or something. But then it sounded like it was upstairs, right next to the closet. Right. So they totally had loud sex the first night, right? No, well, that was the thing. When she got into the bed, she was like, okay, you scoot over there. I'm going to put the big bear between us. Good night. And I was like, not even a little kiss? Closet mom. I guess so. But it was, I, I thought it was like some really hard, like, shut down energy. Now, she would have traveled 30, 30 hours to get there so I do not blame her and I've always said I think it's weird when they're like I demand sex immediately but I I'm also used to a little bit more they were very affectionate at the airport so I thought a little but maybe it's just the cameras being there but I thought a little bit more like like the, I didn't even really see them they did a quick kiss and then like a get into bed and I don't know I I don't know anything else mm. Ashley and Emmanuel, they had a... Uh, oh, their relationship is still toxic. Super healthy because the producers even said, like, oh, you guys are fine now? You weren't an hour ago. And she's like, oh, we had sex. I'm like, ah. And she's like, that's kind of how we're handling it. We're fighting a lot and then having sex. And then he called her... Oh, then she gave a told us all about the magic of sex and how sex is magic and when you... You should just think about what you want. Anyway, I don't need to go into more, more detail with that. That was sufficient. It was a lot of information. So they go to therapy, and he was kind of like, oh, no, first they meet his friends, and he's kind of, I thought, real dismissive about them. Wasn't it her friends? I'm sorry, her friends, sorry. Right. And they're a little bit like, so, um, are you ready to get married? And then he's like, ah, eh, 80%, and... Then he's like, yeah, she just yells a lot and just kind of was kind of smirky schmarmy through it. And obviously her friends are a little concerned. And then he's like, well, they were attacking me. And I was like, I think they were asking some pretty basic questions. And your response to everyone was kind of like, get effed. So it was a little bit like I can see why, why maybe. So he's got good manners and he's super friendly. Yeah, I mean, she's like, I think he's hiding something. And I'm like, I do too. So then they go over to counseling uh, she is bilingual. She has some experience with K-1 visas. And he's sort of like, you know, they're trying to talk. We don't see, obviously, a lot of their therapy session. But we do see the one bit where he's like, um, she's like, well, you know, he just kind of doesn't engage. And then she says to him in Spanish, you know, when you don't engage, um, it makes it really difficult. He's like, yeah. Then she starts yelling. And then I really enjoy it. And I was like, oh, this is such an unhealthy dynamic. Um, and then she's like, why would you, you know, in the interview, she's like, why would he say that? It looks so disrespectful. It looks so awful. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think he has any intention of carrying this. Like, to, I mean, he just seems like he's on a nice little vacation. Maybe he's going to go visit some family soon. And then that's that. Wow. We are really tearing through these without a lot to say. Well, there's not a lot to say. Uh, sorry. Oh, today is our 14th anniversary. Go team, Haverstock. 
Um, and my son woke up in the middle of the night with a coughing fit and then immediately fell back asleep as soon as he was done, but woke everybody else up. Um, and we went, you know, checking on him and stuff. And then, uh, I eventually got back to sleep and our little dog had emergency surgery yesterday and he's doing okay. He looks pretty rough. He's got two straws coming out of his head. He's got a, he's got a drain. He's kind of like this. What do you think? How's that, how's that impression? At least it's better than yesterday where he was like. Yeah, so that's the update on our little pocket dog. He's he's also the one who had the collapsed trachea and we had to rush to the vet a couple weeks ago. They are really cleaning up on us. They are cleaning us out. He's, he's on steroids. He's all doped up on pain meds. Um, all of that. So I guess we're just really low energy right now. But I'm trying to I'm trying to make this interesting. Thank you for joining us. As always, you're our favorites. Nick and Devin, they're going to meet her parent, uh, his parents for approval. They don't seem overly warm, but that is, you know, not everybody is just bubbly and all that. Um, and she responds by immediately crying, which I... So she's hormonal. She's, she's, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? I'm just saying words. Okay. No, well, I mean, she, I think she's, she's a lot there. of anxiety. Everybody was nice, and then she Everyone cries. was nice, but then they were like, oh, it's going to be, you know, what are we supposed to do if you leave? And then she cried, and then he did a very good job of explaining it. I thought he was going to be yeah. kind of a jerk about it after last week, but he was just like, she feels badly because they, she's that she's taking me away and she feels badly because it's causing harm, um, hurt to other people. And they were very nice about it and they were very much like, it's understandable. And the father refers to her as his future daughter-in-law and the mother refers to her as his girlfriend, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, but they seem to be very nice and they don't seem to be... Um, the previews made it look like it was much worse than it was. Yeah, Everyone, at the end they were like, well, we raised a good boy who makes good decisions, so I'm sure it's a good decision, and we support him. Yeah, so it seemed fine, so I guess now... What in the world? Did I write down? Sometimes I write things under the wrong section, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't know if their sex life. Did they discuss their sex life? Not that I recall. Okay, I don't know where that, I don't know what that comes down to. Um, so she's overwhelmed and she feels badly. And then basically the end of it was like, now we're going to go meet her family. And I guess that's the end of it. I thought there would be a lot more to that. But so. that's the episode. I guess we're just done really super early. It's just, it's, there was a lot of like moving every story forward, story forward, but mostly like. Words is hard. He meets, he meets the families and that's that. So. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us today. As always, you're my favorites, and we will see you around. Bye.